I know you're thinking, how can an old man even take on Spider-Man? Well, speaking from personal experience, sometimes these old codgers can really kick your ass. So to take one down is actually a lot harder than it looks. To give back to you guys, the Extreme Channel is giving away this giant Goro statue from PCS for our 20,000 sub giveaway. If you want to know how to win this, I'll tell you a little bit later in this video. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. So first thing I want you to do today is put down in the comments below, will this wing hit my head as I continually spin this around today? I'm thinking it will if I'm a betting man, which I am. But today we're looking at XM Studios, that's who manufactured this, Vulture statue. So this is a one fourth scale Spider-Man villain. And this is an older piece. I actually just got it into the collection. I got a hell of a deal on it and I wanted to add him to my Spider-Man wall. And a few, yeah, I said Spider-Men, like multiple, because there are multiple Spider-Men up there. Now, a few people that have, my voice just cracked too. What the hell is wrong with me? Now, a few people I know that have owned this said it's an incredibly underrated piece. And I can tell you right now, before we get into the in-depth review, they're absolutely right. This piece is awesome. Now, a little bit of history for you about this old man who is such a foe to Spider-Man. Interestingly enough, this is Adrian Toomes. He was an inventor, an engineer, good guy, until his partner kind of embezzled and stole all of his money and put him out of business. Well, he had invented this flight suit that you see. And this flight suit kind of overcomes all that old age stuff, gives him strength and speed and a whole bunch of other stuff. So he became very vengeful and he went to go kill his partner, but Spider-Man stopped him. Kind of another interesting fact, he is actually the second villain that Spider-Man ever fought. Kind of cool. He was portrayed by Michael Keaton in a live action Spider-Man movie right here. A little bit different storyline, but I still really liked Michael Keaton's portrayal of him. But this is the comic version. This is what he looked like in the comics. And there's a few adaptations of this where Adrian Toomes got some superpowers, where the Fulcher suit went to a few different people. But this is the classic and the original one. So that's what we're going to look at today because XM Studios is really known for staying true to those original comic versions. We still think it's going to hit me? probably eventually, but I haven't been drinking because it's only like four in the morning. So let's dive into the review and we're gonna start with concept of this piece. And what's really cool about this is some of the design options we're gonna talk about change the concept a little bit, but check it out. So you have a completely destroyed building base that he's kind of floating off of. And what I like about this base is it's not only a destroyed building, but it ties in with a few other Spider-Man pieces, both from XM Studios and then also from Sideshow. But it's this destroyed rubble base that he's either about to take off or he's landing on, and he can land on different spots on it. We're gonna talk about that during the design part of this review. And he's like in an angelic position. Looks a little weird for an old man to be wearing tights like this, and that position really doesn't help, gives him a little bit of a ballet. But this is probably decently comic accurate, even though it's XM Studios' own take on it. I like that a lot. He looks evil, he looks powerful. Simply the mass of this statue and the presence definitely say a lot about the concept. I think it really adds to it, and I think it makes it look more menacing, just like his torso and portraits. I mean, his feathers and arms are fully outstretched like he's about to fly or attack. Both of his portrait switch outs that we'll look at are very menacing. I think they did the character a lot of justice. And what's really cool about this is not only is the concept pretty cool, but the other things we're going to look at, like paint and sculpt, are also pretty phenomenal. So I give the concept, you know, if you're going to take a vulture, you want him kind of flying. I think they did that, especially with some of this design stuff we're going to look at. I think the concept's a four out of five on this piece. Really impressed. Nice job, XM Studios. Now for design, first thing I want to look at is actually the assembly of this piece. So check it out. I actually thought the box would be bigger. It wasn't. I thought his wings would take up a lot more room. So it was one box, had your standard XM materials in it, including an art print in the position of the statue. Kind of neat. The first layer had the body, the wings, and the portraits. Here it is uncovered from the wax paper. And then the second layer was the base and a few components of that particular base.
All right, so let's get the dimensions really quick, which is gonna be a little difficult. So the widest point of just the base is probably about 18 inches or so. The wingspan, you're looking at 33. The deepest part of the base, and his back wings do add a little bit to it, is about 17 inches. Now the height right here, and now as I said, he can actually be displayed on three different parts of this base. So let me grab the height of the shortest part right here is two feet, a little under 24 inches. So he can be displayed right here, kind of on the front where he is shorter, or you have this display option where he's taking off on the front of the base or what I consider the front, or you can switch them to the other side. And I don't prefer this because I think a lot of the cool stuff you see is in the back here or in the front, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm gonna put them with the Spider-Man collection back there and I'm either gonna do the pose like this if it's too tall and it won't fit or I'm gonna put them right up here. Now another cool thing, those uh, keyholes that he goes into actually have little blocks you can insert to cover up those holes even though they're kind of hard to see otherwise. Now I also mentioned two different portraits. You can see them right here but let's take a closer look. So the first one is his mouth wide open and I was sure this is the one I would display but the mouth closed looks even more menacing to me. I think that might be the way to go. However, I'm looking at both now. I honestly don't know. I think they're both great. So a lot of cool design stuff they did here. I like the fact that you can display them different ways. I like the two different head switch outs. I don't mind the size. I think it really, like I said, encompasses that power. Everything fit together really well. I think the design's a five out of five on this. Really impressed. I hope there's no leaning issues over time. So let's look at the paint and sculpt and we're gonna do a video and I, this is one of my favorites uh, regarding paint and sculpt of the Sinister Six that they've done. So I own all the XM Studios Sinister Six with the exception of Craven, but I was just never a fan for that piece. But this one, like I said, here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's dive in, starting with the base, and I think it's impressive. I like the concrete slash mixed sand. It looks a little bit different on camera than it does in real life, but there is fantastic texture work in here that kind of makes it look like the rubble. And then those broken bricks on top of it, half buried. Uh, I like the contrast of colors that adds. Still some styrofoam in there I need to get out. And equally with the beams from the building. A few of them, they could have used a little bit better grain, but some of them are fantastic, like this right here with the metal pieces riveted in. And what's really cool, this is kind of reminiscent of the Sideshow Spider-Man comic hat I own right back there that's on a building. I love this building, the window frame, the cement wall on it, the mortar, the bricks piled up where some of them are broken off. They did an amazing job with this space. Now, even though I like the front of it, the back of it showing that building is really impressive. And remember, since I said you can display them from up here where these, these bricks are actually the ones that remove and so do these, uh, you could see this as the entire front of it. So I like that a lot. And that probably adds more to those uh, design options we talked about. But the paint and sculpt, I think is phenomenal on the base. And it's just as good on the Vulture. So on his suit, like I said, this is decently comic accurate with a little bit of a modern twist. Uh, they did a good job with the shading so there's not too much grain, uh, green in it. And I'll talk about the contrast to the wing colors in a second. Um, it is decently skin tight, uh, skin tight with the uh, seams there. And if you're a fan of Vulture, the fact that he's an old man really doesn't bother you as much. Then they have the roughly kind of feathery collar. There's some uh, darker colors in there to insinuate some dirt, because I think if it's too clean, it would just look odd. But the anatomy is spot on, I think. He's not over muscularized. He's not too skinny. Look at the portrait, fantastic job. Both of them are very similar uh, with the skin colors and the veins. He has that classic long nose you always see with Vulture. Look at the wrinkles in his skin to help uh, accentuate the age of the character. Some blue highlights in the veins. They just did an amazing job. Look at the eyes, the seriousness. That paint in Sculpt is just awesome. And then the last thing, the wings, equally as impressive. So they're not too heavy. I didn't really talk about that in design. I'm not worried about any leaning issues or anything, but look at the striations and the feathers down here. And like I said, it's a great contrast of green to his costume, so it's not too monotonous, but they're really impressive. 
Huge props to XM Studios. I'm, I'm super impressed with the paint and the sculpt, not only on Vulture himself, but on the base down here. I didn't expect this piece to be that good. So really, let's talk about the paint first. I can't find anything I would change. You know, there is a lot of green on it, but I think, like I said, they did a good job with the variation between the wings and then the different shading in the suit. The base is phenomenal. I think the paint's a five out of five on this. Really impressed for factory paint. And I think the sculpt is equally as impressive. I love every part of the base. Um, some of the wood, a little bit more texture, but I still think it deserves an actual five out of five for the sculpt as well. All right, so value is kind of hard because like I said, this is an older piece. Original retail was 990 Singapore dollars. It's about 750 uh, US dollars. And then because it was only distributed overseas, you would have to pay anywhere from 100 to 200 dollars to get it shipped in. I ended up buying it on the aftermarket for 750 shipped. So essentially I got it under retail which is fantastic because there's only 500 made of this particular piece. And while I love the concept of the Michael Keaton uh, vulture, I don't, you know, I don't think anyone's done a statue. They may have done a hot toy on it. I want classic comic versions of my Spider-Man villains for the most part, maybe some modern twists. So I think this is an absolute steal at that price, even at the retail price, which I think a lot of times you can get it under that. Um, but because it is an older piece, I'm not actually going to rate the value, but I, I, I would definitely pick this up if you're on the fence. So let's talk about, does this have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? And that's not a cumulative score. It's when I look at this, I'm really impressed. Well, first of all, from far away you are, whether he's mounted down here or he's mounted up here, because where you mount is really important. That's what she said. <laughs> Just the size of him and kind of the action dynamic aspect of the statue is really impressive. Then you get up close and you look at the paint and sculpt. Shockingly, I'm gonna say this is a five out of five statue. I think this has the X factor. I did not expect that at all. I was hoping that I would like it and I absolutely love it. To win this Goro statue, first thing you got to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've actually subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Second thing is leave a comment below and make sure it's a witty, entertaining, or funny comment. Because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video, and the comment that has the most likes on it will be the winner of this Goro statue. So make sure your comment is entertaining to others and entertaining to Mr. X. Because if I like it, I'm actually going to pin it to the tops to help you get more likes. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. You may have noticed I'm kind of on a Spider-Man villain kick lately. And depending when this launches, I may have another one or two coming. So make sure to hit that Mr. X logo to subscribe. If not, drop me a like on the way out, and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.